Well, hello everyone. Thought I'd give you an update of what, what I've been doing. I've been working on the motor some, trying to uh, prep it before I send it back to the machine shop. Um, I did some porting on it. I can kind of show you what I did. I'm ju just port matching the intake manifold, um, you know, runners to the size of the runners on the motor. Um, so what I did is I put stuff called die cam on there and then take your intake manifold I put bolts through the holes to line it up and then you take a scribe, you scribe around it and then that gives you a nice uh, line if you can see it like right there to uh, you know that's metal that you want to remove so I did that um, on the block side I haven't got to the intake manifold yet but I did that on the block side and really didn't have to remove much at all on the block side just a little bit on this inside lip here and then just kinda all I did on the runners was uh, basically remove like all the casting um, I didn't really open them up to, per se but I just kind of smoothed them out and blended this area in where I had to open it up a little bit. Um, on the uh, exhaust runners, maybe I can get a flashlight there. Okay, see where it's shiny right there. Uh, there's like a little eyebrow over the valve guides. Um, so what I did is I ground those down kind of flush and at an angle to the top of the valve guides. And that's going to help the exhaust gases just flow out of there a little bit easier. And I did that on the, you know, all the exhaust ports. Um, and then down here, I opened those exhaust ports up to about um, one and three quarter inches. I did the same thing. I took the header gasket, put it on there, scribed a line, and then opened that area up. And, uh, you know, in this, sorry about the bad camera work. In this area here, um, kind of made, you know, angled it, rounded it off so the exhaust gases flow better through here. And there was some, um, casting wire and stuff in there and a lot of bumps and rough stuff so removed all that stuff ground it out and that'll help the exhaust gases again flow out a little bit better um, so that's pretty much all I did I did on the intake ports here there's kind of a abrupt you know right angle right here and if you round that off it helps the intake gases come into that valve a little easier I did that on the, all the intake valves also but I'll tell you what, it's kind of scary grinding on a block when you know there's water passages there. You don't want to go too far and hit water, <laughs> then your block's ruined. So I was really cautious, I just rounded them off a little bit. I didn't go race crazy on this block, you know, but I did help it a little bit and I learned a little bit about porting, so that was kind of cool. Oh, and I also revisited um, pressure checking my motor where before I couldn't get the bolts that hold the pressure testing plate down to the block. Well, I ordered this stuff, this Permatex right stuff, and that did the trick. That stuff sealed up the threads really good, really quick too. And uh, I was able to get a good pressure check on each side of the block. Uh, 20 PSI held for 10 minutes, um, several times, so that was good. Well, I'm out here cleaning up the crank. I removed the plugs and I was, you know, you're supposed to clean out the sludge traps. Each one of these uh, journals here has a sludge trap drilled through it from this side to this side. Plus you've got the oil passages going, going down where each rod journal is. Um, I thought I'd show you guys, you know, these things, when they say you gotta clean them up, so I'm taking my little drill here and just kind of getting the stuff out by hand. But 
I mean, the crap that is coming out of here. I mean, that was just, that didn't even hardly go anywhere, you know? Look at all that stuff that's in there. It's just packed with stuff. I don't even know how oil could pass through there. I really don't. It's crazy. Also, got all my brake line parts, uh, or brake system uh, installed. I still, I'm gonna remove all that and paint it and everything, but I installed it so I can get my brake lines run. Uh, I used the 39, original 1939 Ford brake pedal assembly. I got a little adapter off of eBay for cheap uh, that adapts a dual master cylinder. This is a 1967 Mustang dual master cylinder for drum drum brakes. I was hoping that it would have the residual valves inside internally, but it ended up not having them. So I had to, you know, buy the aftermarket residual valves for the front and back, 10 pound residual valves uh, in each line. And that'll help keep pressure um, uh, on the front brake drums. It kind of overrides the spring pressure, retracting spring pressure on the brake drums. So you get a little better pedal feel. Um, I used a uh, NICOP line. I got a great deal on uh, a whole package of uh, uh, the protecting protective um, coil here. Uh, I got 3 16 and quarter inch line and it's just pretty nice to work with. Uh, it's real easy. If you get in a tight spot you can kind of bend it by hand or straighten it by hand pretty easy. So I like it. And what I did is I just ran the brake lines kind of around this area. I thought it was a lot cleaner. Initially I came out and then I came right across here and I just didn't like how that was. Plus when I removed this master cylinder you know, I wouldn't have a lot of room. I'd be moving brake lines and stuff. So this way, uh, I'll be able to remove that master cylinder real nice. And this area is really clean. Um, ran the brake, brake lines around. The top one there is the uh, rear brake line. And then it wraps around. Goes through the frame. Uh, to a hose, which that's the... I just, on max, I bought the 1939... Uh, flexible hose for that and that worked out right uh, it could have been a little longer you know there was already a stock hole in this frame up here but the hose wasn't quite long enough so I just drilled another hole a little lower I'd probably get a longer hose if I had if I knew that but anyway that goes into a T and then I got the NICOP line running underneath uh, the torque tube Got uh, three clamps on that, and then goes into that protective wire because that's kind of exposed out there with no no fenders on the car. Up and into the wheel cylinder. Now, I probably that's how the stock 39 goes, but it has fenders. I it might have been a better idea to wrap it around the back and have that axle protect the line from you know rocks flying up or whatever, but. The roads around here are pretty good, so uh, we'll see how that goes. If it ends up getting dented or dinged up, I'll just reroute them again. Um, and then same thing on same thing on this side. I kind of dipped down there a little bit um, because that little T block there was up high, so I wanted to run it down to protect the brake line behind um, uh, the metal there so or the radius rods so that it, it would be protecting the line and then again you know the protective cover and then into my wheel cylinders um, basically the same way the stock 39 ran and then for the front I wrapped it around behind that little lip so it would be protected from rocks, hopefully. Plus it's got the coil on there. And then it's over here in, tucked inside the frame. I have my brake light switch um, and the residual valve. Uh, you have to make sure that the brake line switch is, you know, like on the master cylinder side or else your brakes are always going to be on if it's holding 10 PSI over here. So anyway, got the residual valve in there and that line wraps up. Uh, three clamps holding that area there too. Up to a T here. And then I went, you know, for the hoses, this is, 
since I'm using 19 uh, 48 to 52 Ford F1 pickup truck front brakes I just went down to Napa and had them order me these hoses they were the right size I mean they worked perfect just for the regular Ford truck so I used those I drilled through the hole or the drilled a hole through the frame and then used the little clip to hold it hold it in there and then uh, tease off there runs around uh, behind the inside of the cross member a couple clamps holding that and then back to this side and then the same thing for F1 hose going out to the other side uh, I haven't added fluid to it yet but uh, that's the plan to leak check it uh, after I get all that stuff painted and you know permanently installed I'll go ahead and leak check it before I have the body on in case I have to do something to it. It's a lot easier to work on it with just a frame open like this. Um, but that's pretty much what I've been doing. It's coming along pretty good. Making progress. I did find, while I was looking at my motor a little closer, um, let's see, number eight, number eight cylinder over here. There's pretty bad corrosion pits on number eight cylinder and I measured the depth of that corrosion and I got about 52 thousandths wall um, thickness on that cylinder so the machine shop's probably going to have to sleeve that one and maybe one more cylinder I'm hoping that's all I'll have to sleeve so but we'll see how that goes I'll be taking that into them tomorrow and that's about it for this update Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you later.